Jane Lo and I'm at the ACM which is the very same association that uh, hands out the prestigious uh, Turing Award and this is the Asia Conference on Computer and Communications Security. With me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Wong Hee Lee who all the way from Korea who is going to be sharing with us on this very important topic of phishing and threat actors latest tools and uh, techniques I think that all of us are familiar with this social engineering technique you know we get uh, emails yeah. and we get uh, text messages from all these attackers we, we get the sense that you know some of these uh, threat actors they have um, sort of phishing kits that they buy yeah in this uh, phishing as a service in some underground uh, forums. So how much do we know about these uh, buyers and sellers who are trading these mm -hmm. phishing kits in the uh, cyber underground forums? Mm -hmm. There's probably other channels they use. and The phishing kit is a single archived file with total package of phishing service. Phishing attackers buy these phishing kits from phishing kit creators. Some underground forums you said, and now Telegram channels can be the one channel. It makes uh, phishing attackers acquire phishing kits very easily. Yes. Because we need some like tour or we need to know the exact domain name of that onion to access the dark net market. So these telegram channels make it easier for phishing attackers to get phishing kits. Now, one study, they show that some like Dutch banking phishing kits in telegram channels. So, uh, some of these phishing kits, they actually are specifically for yeah. a brand. So, um, some people would be wondering if the attackers subscribe to some of these uh, phishing as a service, are they buying 10 brands in one? Yes. But yeah, it could also be possible. Yes. And there are some famous phishing creators like the no name is X XRT and Sparks and Yuan Min. They are famous phishing creator. And if you Google them, you can see some examples of them. And actually, the Fishing creator of UN Min was caught in 2021 okay. in U Ukraine, but their fishing kits are last still there, yeah, still there right. in underground forums. I'm sure that some of these are fishing creators is a, perhaps a team of people. Yes, and there was interesting research that Microsoft they study about some fishing kit called Zoofish. Zoofish was composed with other six or seven kits, then they created the one fishing kit. All oh, right, so they bring like um, modules of other... Yes, like evasion Whoa. model from this kit. Okay, And right, right. data exfiltration modules from other kits like that. I, I have to describe what is phishing kit. For yes, what's one fish, phishing kit? <laughs> In one sentence, uh, it is the single archived file with PHP scripts or images and JavaScript scripts. Phishing attack only needs to inflate it and the URLs will be created and submitting their email name in configuration file or some telegram ID. So to configure the file, they need to provide their own email address. And yes. So they are exposing their identities in some ways. But it's very easy to create some fake emails. Oh, that's true. Yes, only okay. one-time email using fake IDs in Gmail. Okay. And even they use some compromised accounts, so it makes hard to trace their real mm. ID. Okay. Yeah, so you talk about these phishing kits have uh, been in the archive form and then it has to be sort of unzipped and inflated, yeah. right? And then, um, then the attackers will, I guess, uh, deploy it and launch it and because they have already selected the kind of target mm. brand so these are really customized plug and play, I guess. Yes, plug and play. Wow, okay. No wonder yeah. uh, the phishing is still quite a big yes. problem. Yes. Even people who are not specialized in computer science, they can do mm. with phishing kits. Well, of course, uh, we have to give a warning to the audience not to you know, uh, go back and <laughs> explore this, uh, <laughs> even though they are quite easy uh, yes. to do. Too right? easy. Too, too easy, okay. Yeah. I understand fr also from your research that uh, this phishing kit normally has like various types of components, like yes. a component that helps set up the website to make it look li like a real website, yeah. and then a component that helps the attacker to exfiltrate information confidential sensitive information from the victim and then a component that helped the attacker to evade monitoring detection mm. schemes is that is that sort of roughly the tr types of main components that are in a phishing kit there are three main components in phishing kits and i call slightly different from, from our other researchers but there are three components that are web appearance components and that is what we see like mimicking 
the other authentic brands. And second one is the data exfiltration component. That is how to convey the submitted information to phishing attacker, like email. And nowadays, the Telegram bots are trending. And some have administration panels for uh, like can see the uh, submitted information in real time. The last component of phishing kit is called evasion component. The word evasion in here means that mm -hmm. evasion to anti-phishing entities. Mm -hmm. If you are a phishing attacker, when you make some phishing pages without evasion technique, then it will be blocked in mm -hmm. around 30 minutes, under 30 minutes, even if you're not sending links, uh, because the domain sellers and hosting services and they are finding who is phishing, so it will be blocked under 30 minutes. But these evasion techniques make them live longer, like when the phishing attacks are over. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, okay. So uh, you are saying that um, the evasion uh, module component yes. has, uh, for example, a way to filter out um, bot like sort of domains. Yes. Um, because they have, a, I guess, they keep a list of what are malicious, and this list is constantly updated mm -hmm. as security companies yes, uh, yes. report them and gather them in the central repository or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so. I think one other evasion uh, technique, I believe that you also mentioned in your paper, yes. or, uh, is also dynamically generated yeah. URLs as well. So the URLs are, are, <laughs> are generated on the fly. Yeah. So there's no way for, I guess, some of these filters to work then if they are dynamically generated, right? Yes. So you, because you don't know what it's going to look like. But we can imagine how they are generating URLs. There are some patterns, because it is just codes they are made in some like patterns like mm. random numbers or there's some patterns behind the randomness yes yes and it has differences with authentic services like when we go to microsoft login page they have some very randomized urls too but it has something different with this phishing kit generating urls so so talking about the other component which is um the exfiltration yes um, this is a component that allows the attacker to interact in real time with the victim's machine to get what the victim has put into mm -hmm. the page yes. and take that information. So this exfiltration component, I believe you say in your paper as well, uh, sometimes they also offer a chat bot. Yeah, is it? Really. So to, to, to mislead, say, the victim that this is a real website because yes. you wouldn't think that a malicious one would have a chat agent, right? Yes. Just imagine the simple scenario of phishing. The most simple page is a uh, login page. I think 30% of phishing pages are finished at that point. And the more advanced phishing kit you said, the real-time bot, imagine the scenario that uh, someone try login with their right ID and mm -hmm. password but gets errors recursively, and they will contact help service. and the phishing attackers are behind the live chatbot mm, and mm. they act, act as chatbot and like input the SMS code I send you. Oh, uh, I see what you mean, they. right. So so the attacker could be mm, logging into a real, say, uh, the bank that you, one of these uh, big banks page yes. using the victim's ID and yeah, what yeah, password. Right. And then at the same time, the attacker is going to get the, say, the second factor authentication, yeah. like the one-time PIN, from the victim through the chat bot yes, on this yes. malicious That's website. Right. How, this is very sophisticated. In your research, do you find that a lot of phishing sites can do this? Probably no, not very. No, not really. It's less than 5%. Of, only the 5% of tools can offer these services. It is like acting as type of spear phishing. Most phishing attackers are not specialized in these tools. Um, you also highlighted in your paper about this uh, characteristic uh, called burst. bursty, yeah, hit and run is it that you call it. Yeah. Can you explain how that makes the attacker's phishing kit look more sophisticated? Mm. The sophis sophisticated phishing kits the, that act as real time like live chat show the bursty trends uh, their deployment trends are concentrated in one month okay so they just deploy one month and then that's it you don't yes, see they anymore disappear in the fishing ecosystem 
Oh, I see. So is that also what you call as hit and run? Yes, hit and run. This is in my opinion. Those real-time fishing kits are targeting like financial brands. Most of them mm -hmm. are targeting financial brands. And they have timeline when testing their vulnerabilities of their services. Oh, for example, like pen testing. Yes, yes. I think this some bursty trends appear when they are, the banks are concentrating on their testing. So they are less warning for real-world attacks. So talking about this, what are some detection methods that I can use yes. as a <laughs> normal person? There are many detection mechanisms and as you know, the AI-based me detection oh. mechanism is traditionally necessary part of phishing detection. Like they use some like, phishing URLs and icons of uh, services and okay. codes HTML codes right, right. <laughs> and even the page interaction where you click and uh, user interface. And there are too many detection mechanisms in AI based, like Google Safe Browsing. You are saying Google Safe Browsing has some AI sort of uh, yeah. running in the background that help to detect. Okay, that's right, of course. Yeah, sometimes they, I get these uh, messages. Are you sure you want to click yeah, on the yeah. link? Okay. <laughs> The most important and efficient way to prevent phishing is just looking your, the URLs on your browser. The most phishing URLs cannot use the authentic URLs. Authentic services use many .com domains, but they are using some cheap, cheaper domains like .xyz. Have right. you, have you ever course, seen? Yes, dot <laughs> XYZ, right. Yes. So it could be Amazon.xyz. We yeah, have yeah. to be careful that it's not Amazon.com, for example. Yeah. And other tips for users is checking the delay of the services. Actually, the phishing services are not giving same user experience, user experience as authentic services. So you can feel the delay when you access the phishing service. Like when you use Google, the delay is like less than one second, but for most of phishing services, their delay is about more than one or two seconds. So mm. you can feel the delay, mm. I, I can say that. So like a user experience, uh, you know, something that we can actually feel mm. uh, instinctively that something mm -hmm. is not right because there's a lag yeah. in the response. And don't believe the appearance of their phishing kit's appearance is really, really same to authentic services. Mm. So basically, pay more attention to the URLs, uh, and if delay. there's an instinctive uh, yes. feel that there's some delays, be suspicious, basically. <laughs> yes. Okay, right. Yeah, so thank you so much uh, for your time today. Um, so based on your research, what do you think you know, the next stage of sophistication is going to be when it comes to phishing kit? Authentic services acknowledge these problems of phishing, so they adding some very strict to FA to, to factor authentications in their services. So the phishing kits are evolving and mm -hmm. there are, there is study for 2FA phishing kits. So what you're saying is that the 2FA will be a feature that uh, attackers will focus on yes, right now. Um, to, to bypass all these yes. measures. Interesting. Yeah, and then it will be interesting to see how AI is going to also, you know, yeah. make it easier for everybody not just for the attackers, but also for us. Um, yes. Right, okay, so thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It was wonderful interview.